PJ Flex Show is brought to you by Cup Foods and Affinity Plus. You have to do it. You got to want to do it right now. Now, it's the PJ Flex Show with Pierre Nugent, Ron Johnson, and Justin Gard. Let's roll. And welcome in, everybody, to the P.J. Fleck Show, joined, as always, by the Gopher head football coach, P.J. Fleck, alongside Gophers Hall of Famer Ron Johnson and K fans Justin Gard. I am Pierre Newsham. It was a tough go of it in Champaign, Illinois, as Minnesota dropped a 26-14 decision against Illinois. Coach, uh, now that you've had a few days to break down the film, look back at what went wrong. When you look at that, it was kind of a grinded-out kind of game. You guys were very much in the game in the second half. What just didn't allow you to get over the finish line there at the end against Illinois. Well, it came down to execution, period. I mean, they executed 4-4 four of four on fourth down, which we were not bad on third downs, but fourth down on those four drives. They scored points on all four of those drives that they went for it on fourth down, and that absolutely crushed us. Um, we weren't able to stay on the field long enough. We'd get them in first and 20, they'd convert. We'd get them in second and 19, they'd convert. There's a lot of things defensively we haven't done all year uh, that we did in this particular game, uh, and we still had the lead in the second half. We're going down uh, to drive in the fourth quarter, down 20 to 14, making a drive. We drop a ball. Um, and so there were a lot of things that factored in that we just we take two steps forward and three steps back. Uh, but I love how hard our team fought. I love how hard they played. We just didn't make enough plays and couldn't stay on the field offensively long enough. We only had seven total real possessions, and that's not enough to score enough points against a really good defense like that. Yeah, I know you've heard this question probably 50 times so far, but Tanner Morgan. Let's make it 51. <laughs> <laughs> Tanner Morgan, I saw the social media post that you guys posted saying he's doing well, uh, you know, keeping your prayers. But how is Tanner doing right now? He's surprisingly better. Okay. <laughs> surprisingly. Surprisingly That's better. Good. I just like to leave it and see if he'll go. Uh, <laughs> but PJ never fills the silences. Right. Right. <laughs> It's always, it's always, this one's good to me yeah. th that way. I have to imagine it's got to be like difficult though. We, last year you go through a situation, you know, with Trey Potts. You know, it's obviously different situations, but you you, just, you see another player that has to go to a hospital for head coach. I'm sure it's got to be a stressful situation to see that. Well, these are these are your, you know, you're not their parent, but you're an acting parent while they're in college. So they're all your sons, and uh, I've known Tanner for a long time. And unfortunately, we've kind of hit the injury bug here a little bit with some really key players, star players, guys that have played a ton of football that make us a really experienced team. Um, and uh, it's unfortunate, but I know he'll make a, a, a healthy recovery. And I know everybody was taking the right precautions and can't thank the medical team at University of Illinois and our doctors and our medical team here. And that's the great thing about being here. You have great care. I mean, it, 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 uh, exceptional care. And I think our student athletes really appreciate that. With Tanner playing so much, does that change how the week would go in terms of preparation of, hey, maybe he gets cleared on Friday and he can go even if he hasn't practiced? And when do you kind of need to make those calls with the guys behind him? Yeah, well? I mean, first of all, the call is not made by me. It's made by our medical team, but they have not ruled him completely out yet. Uh, I think they handle every case by an individual basis. Um, you know, you never really know how bad it is until the next day uh, when you really evaluate that individual. Uh, obviously very scary scenes as you kind of see him on the field, but I think everybody was taking the proper precautions to make sure that he was going to be okay. But what you have to do is you got to plan for the alternative. Uh, Tanner's a young man who's played a ton of football, so do I need him on a Tuesday morning practice? No, I don't need him for that. Wednesday, I don't need him for that. You can make that call on Friday or Saturday if you have to, if that's what gives you the best chance to win. What it does then is gives the other guys opportunities. It gives Cole, it gives Ethan, it gives Jacob opportunities to get a lot of reps just in case they have to go play. Now, when, when you're looking at those two guys in particular, Cole and Ethan, I know you're probably comfortable with either one of you mentioned in the press conference that you know Cole has experience. ethan has got a tremendous amount of upside and talent. When you look at the two of them, what maybe might separate one from the other if Tanner can't play this weekend? Well, I think it comes down to the preparation You know, as we go through the week, and uh, we'll determine that depending on what the game plan looks like because they, they both can do a lot of similar things. And uh, I think that helps us be able to create the best game plan we possibly can if Tanner's not able to go. And the passing struggles, you had a little bit of passing struggle against Illinois. Uh, what were they doing that just – maybe just didn't get the passing game clicking the way we've seen it in the past. Well, I think that's a great example of one of them is that we weren't aggressive enough towards the ball. The first four games, our wideouts, we were tight ends attacking the football, being quarterback friendly. Um, and, again, an underthrown ball like this, you got to go up to be able to get that. And now, again, Michael brown Stevens played some football, but he's not, a, he's, not a, he's not a senior. He's not a guy who's played hundreds and hundreds of games. He's got to have the ability to go do that, but we got to get him to do that. We got to give him the opportunities to go be, be that type of player. And we got to be able to put the ball where it needs to be so we don't have to make that type of play every time. 
the first four games, we were making big time, big contested catches. The last two games, we haven't done that, and that's the biggest difference. Because when you're not converting those types of pass plays, it's hard to be balanced. And now you're in a second and long situation or a third and long situation. And against a defense like that, who's number one in the country, yeah. and they're that good, it, you're, I mean, you're treading uphill the entire game. And then you're your, your defense isn't getting off the field. Right. So then you're limiting your possessions, and everything we do is kind of thrown out the window, and we get into things that make us pretty uncomfortable. And, and they executed the game plan better than us. Yeah, and, and I totally agree. Like, I was going to, it was not about the offense and talking film with PJ Fleck. There's a PJ Fleck show, we got more questions. But I will say I do agree with that because when you look at some of those balls thrown, you attack the ball, it's a different ball game. Yep. And that's where Chris Altman Bell, a guy like that, missing. But let's transition to the, the same defense. thing is go back to the Purdue game. Same thing. Yep. You know, we're going to the score, and we, we, we were not able to be aggressive enough with the ball. That's uh, pretty – hits us you yep. know, in, in the chest. And we just have to be better. And these are guys – listen, our guys keep getting better. Today's practice, they mm -hmm. did that. Yep. And so they're really good at this is what we need to be able to do. And they respond to that really well, and I'm proud of them for that. Yeah, and that's what I'm looking forward to, the response. When you look at the defense's response, this past game, first time ever, it looks like they struggled to stop the run. We know these are really good running backs. We know their quarterback can move a little bit too. What, what, what did you see in that with the defense as far as not being able to stop the run? Well, it was just we weren't able to stop the run in four plays. Yep. You know, I think that was what it came down to, and they were really aggressive, and to their credit, they executed, and, and we didn't. Yeah. Uh, we weren't able to get guys on the ground. Uh, too many just ankle tackles, you know, and we weren't. But that's a credit. You're playing one of the best tailbacks in the country. Yeah. Um, we had chances to get off the field. We had chances to get stops. We put them in really long first and 20s, second and 19s. And that would, that's one of the frustrating things about football is, um, you know, sometimes uh, those things happen. And you got to do everything you can to limit them. It's not acceptable by any means or any stretch of the imagination. But I loved our players' response, which is the only thing we can control. And, and you can be very honest with this football team. Mo Ibrahim comes in, not a lot of carries, a ton of yards. <laughs> kind of the Mo that we know, right? I mean, if you would have said Mo's going to go over 100 for a 14th straight game, I know you would take that every time. Well, every time. And I, I think as we continue to go forward, I mean, he can even do more as we go. Uh, you know, being the last few weeks he was banged up, um, you know, we got to take care of our players. But we weren't able to sustain and stay on the field long enough for even more carries. There was only, you know, 19 plays in the first half that we had. Yeah. Right? Half of those, or more than half, were runs. Right? And then we get to the second half, and you know, we're, we're now we're in a passing-type situation, and then we throw some interceptions at the end. And, but he is who he is. He's a really special player. Uh, we get Trey Potts back again this week, which will help in the, with the depth there. Um, and then our wideouts have, just have to be able to step up and make some plays, and, and um, you know, we just got to play and execute better. You've often talked about the challenges of dealing with 18-, 19-, 20-year-old kids. When you lose back-to-back -back games, what do you have to do or say to them to prevent maybe doubt from creeping in and a slip of confidence at all? What, how, what's the challenge like with that? Well, it's all proactive, right? We don't look at it as a streak like everybody else looks at. We look at it as one game, championship season. We didn't play well enough to win. We lost that particular one game. You're not looking at it as the externals talking about, okay, that's two in a row. Uh, but we don't talk like that. Uh, we talk, here's whether we won or lost. Here's why that happened. We need to fix all these things. You can't really tell whether we win or we lose when you come in on Sunday. Uh, you really can't. Now, in the locker room after a win, you can tell that. After a loss, you can probably tell that. But when you come in on Sunday, you can't because we're so process-driven and we're so response-driven that no matter what the outcome is, we got to get better. And uh, our, I think our team really responds well to that, and they're a pretty mature team. They understand that. Yeah, when you look at Penn State, every coach wants to talk about the next game, so let's go to the next game. you got Penn State coming up. I, I mean, I'm getting messages from LeVar Arrington already. I mean, this, <laughs> this has become one of the matchups that people look forward <laughs> pretty to. Pretty good player. I'm, I'm <laughs> people look forward to this game. You know, and you think about, you know, the 1999s. You look at, you know, you guys beat them in 2019. Again, another big one. They're going to white this one out, 6.30 p.m. What, what are you looking forward to with this one? Well, it's, it's the next opportunity. You know, I, I think this is – I've never been there for game day. Uh, we're creating an atmosphere that hopefully um, does everything it can to not maybe match it live, mm -hmm. but create this atmosphere that the communication is almost impossible. You need to be able to cross your T's, dot your I's during the week so it becomes second nature in the communication part. And then it comes down to just running our offense and executing our defense, same thing, and, um, and just executing at a high level in all three phases. Uh, and I think we can do that. Um, you know, they're a really good football team, but we, first four games, we showed what we're capable of doing. Last two weeks, we've kind of had some hiccups here and there. We're still in both games. We just weren't able to finish them, and now we just got to be able to put a complete game back together. Is there a little extra juice to a night game? Uh, you know what? I, 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 would like to, I would like to, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I would like to sit there and say that there's not, um, 
because you want them. Game day is game day. Sure. Yeah. We'll yeah, play yeah. anytime, anywhere. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, but I do believe that this is, to Ron's point, I mean, when you're a football player, these are the moments that you live for. You know, I mean, these are the, you have the traditions of college football, the, the, the pageantry. Um, this is one of the greatest sports vi- venues and environments on this particular whiteout um, in, in, around. And why sure. wouldn't you want to play in that? And that does get you really excited to play. And, and, um, but we, you only get 12 guaranteed, so you should be excited every week. Yeah, right. But it is fun for our guys. It is fun for them, I'm sure, too. So how do you simulate 109,000 people all wearing the same color? <laughs> Except for the Gopher fans, which a lot are coming, by the way. I mean, the, the fan groups, all that stuff sold out in terms of the allotment. So how do you simulate all of that? Well, we do everything. We come inside, and all these speakers uh, are massively, uh, uh, you know, hopefully they're not blown out by now. Uh, we, br- <laughs> we also bring in more speakers. Uh, we flicker the lights. Um, everybody's that all our support staff and all of our coaches have towels uh, because they're going to have their white pom poms. Um, and, and again, we're not saying that we're recreating <laughs> right the environment, but we're doing everything we can to distract them in practice. Um, nobody's going to be on the field waving a white towel and doing circles around our quarterbacks or our running backs. And but we're doing that. Right. Um, there's a light show and lasers everywhere to get somebody to look. Oh, squirrel. Right, um, <laughs> you're doing all of that, and you, you can't even hear yourself think. And we did this at Mich- against Michigan State. Yep. It's maybe double what we're doing now um, because we know it's basically a double type of attendance. Sorry yeah. to the neighborhood down here, yeah. Mickey Tom. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. sorry about that. Although I would like to be in here when there's a laser light show going on. I would be very curious to see what we'll that's We'll do that next like. time you walk in. <laughs> that's a. Yeah, perhaps good. that's next on the PJ Flex Show next week. Coming up uh, on the other side of the break, we'll be joined by one of the key members of this Gopher defense, Jordan Howden, going to be joining us here on set when we come back. Let's row the boat. You're watching the PJ Flex Show. Welcome back, everybody, to the PJ Flex Show. Joined by a very special guest here on set now, one of the senior defensive backs of this group, Jordan Howden, here with us on set. And, Jordan, we had Tyler Newbin on this set last week. We <laughs> asked him, is this perhaps the most talented group of defensive backs that he's ever played with in his time here at Minnesota? He said it's got to be up there. How would you feel about the talent in this DB room? Um, I also agree with that as well, um, especially coming off from 2019. Uh, you would think with Antoine Winfield Jr. and um, and all the guys we had, Coney Dare and stuff. Sure. But I feel like with this year uh, in 2022, we had definitely have a, a good defensive core. So. This summer at Big Ten Media Day, your head coach sitting to your left said, that Jordan hates talking about how far he's come as a player <laughs> from 2018 to now. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Talk about how far you've come. <laughs> yeah, but it really the, the, the name of the show says we get to, <laughs> the PJ <laughs> Flex Show. <laughs> but in 2018, yes, you, you get you play, you get thrust into a situation, right. and you've gotten a lot better from that time. And yeah. he would say at the time, Jordan Howden's going to be a really good player. He's not supposed to be a great player right now, but he will be. So what was that like going through, and how do you feel like you've grown from that time to where you are now? Um, especially coming from my freshman year, um, you get in there, you don't know what to expect, uh, to get, especially like the game speed and the, how big people are and stuff like that. But you learn as you go, especially with Coach Fleck here. You know, he makes sure as it's a growth program, um, especially mentally and everything. Uh, you, you just grow from every aspect of your life. So I feel like, especially coming from my, my fifth year now, I've definitely grown since especially the first play of getting in my <laughs> freshman year. So, <laughs> well, I know comfortable is not a word that can be used in this program. But right. when, when did you start to feel like, okay, this is something I can do, I belong here, and because you've really taken off since then. Right. Uh, I feel like it. not even my second year, I would feel like my third going on to my fourth year. Um, it does take a long time. Um, each year you do, you, you do feel more comfortable as you go, but – I wouldn't say I've really felt really like as I can play as me right. probably to my third, fourth year. So. Let's take a look back at the game against Illinois a few days ago. You guys played hard, just came up a little bit short. What wasn't working from your vantage point on the field? What was Illinois doing to kind of make things difficult for you guys? Uh, with Illinois, they're, that was a, a very elite team. They're very good, as you see and watch on the film. Um, we just didn't execute the game plan as we wanted to, but, I mean, it does happen. Uh, it is football, so you just got to move on from it. Sure. Sure. PJ, I know you mentioned that, you know, Jordan maybe doesn't want to talk about or Justin said he doesn't want to talk about how far he's come. So we'll let you talk about how far he's coming. You've had him for a long time. What have you seen from Jordan, you know, as he's progressed here at the U? I'm not sure if uh, one individual's grown more mentally, physically, and emotionally more than, than, than Jay Howe. Um, you know, I, I have a ton of respect for him and what he's been able to do 
when you're thrown into it as a as and your Antoine Winfield Jr.'s backup and he gets hurt and you get thrown in there, he's right. I mean, you don't know your right hand from your left hand. <laughs> you don't know what, what what to expect, and then you're expected to perform at a really high level. And then you're really hard on yourself because when you get put in a game, you kind of reflect back to your high school days and you're the best player. And now you get out there and it, it's way different than it was. But this guy has stayed the course. He can play safety. He can play nickel. He can play corner. Uh, he's one of the most athletic players we have, one of the most committed players that we have, one of the best people we have on our team. And he's a great example for all of our young players out there right now who, who are maybe on the scout team or maybe coming along that they, they, they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet. I always use that example of him because, I know, one, I know he can handle it, but two, he's just a, an amazing story. And you got to know where you've been to know where you're going, and he's a great example right. of that. What's it like playing with Tyler Newbin? Pierre mentioned him. We had him on the show here recently. You guys, it seems like, have a great relationship back there. What's yeah. it like with him kind of being your partner back there? Um, just like as with him, when he first got on the field, he didn't know what was really going on <laughs> as well. But it, that's, just, that's what is expected. But yeah. as, you, as you see as the years go on, he, very, he sees the field differently. Uh, we communicate very well. Um, it's different when you see, see the play before it happens, be able to communicate with someone. And uh, I really like that with him especially. So he'd be able to talk to each other. So. And forgive me for sounding too much like your head coach here. <laughs> it is the Penn State championship season this right. week. What are you looking forward to the most playing against Penn State and what kind of challenge do they pose? Uh, first of all, it's just going, going to the stadium. You know, it's the first time going. Um, second of all, just having fun, be able to go out there and do what we do, especially with a – uh, much larger stands and uh, have a bunch of people up there. So it's going to be fun. So Can't you're wait. in the moment now. You're playing Penn State now. Um, but as, if you've ever watched this show, you know that when you're a former player, you get to live in the past. That's what Ron Johnson does, who usually sits in your seat. He, <laughs> talk, he was talking about the 1999 Penn State game where they went into Happy Valley and won. Okay. You sealed the game in 2019. That's something you're going to get to talk about the rest of your life with that interception. So take me back to that game. Take us back to that moment and, and just everything that, that meant there for you. Um, coming from that game, I know there was like one minute left, and I think it was like third and whatever it was, and we knew we had to stop them because we were up by three or four points. Um, and then the, as the play went on, I just seen the ball in there, and I had to go. I, was, <laughs> I had to go get it. I didn't. It was. It happened so fast. It, it was something I would never forget, though. I believe it. Yeah. I'm the champ. You like that celebration <laughs> yeah. from back in 2019? We got it. We the champs. Find, yeah, find <laughs> He's the <laughs> ultimate champ. No, oh, no, man. It's the end of the game, man. He's the champ. No doubt about it. Jordan, we appreciate you taking the time. Continued health, continued success. We look forward to watching you on the field this appreciate week. Appreciate you having me, man. Jordan Howden, everybody. We'll be back with more on the PJ Flex Show on the other side of the break. We'll talk a little bit more about what's coming up against Penn State this weekend. Should be a great contest. All that and more coming up on the PJ Flex Show. Welcome back to the P.J. Flex Show. Let's row the boat. Moving right along here on the P.J. Flex Show. And, Coach, uh, you had a special moment over the weekend for Quentin Redding, who just had a big day. We don't talk about special teams often enough in this show. Now is our time to talk special teams. <laughs> Quentin Redding, a big day return in the football, 151 yards. I know you mentioned after the game it was kind of a special moment to see him have success. What is it like for you? to watch him have that kind of success. Yeah, he's a special young man. Uh, you know, everybody cares so much about him. We actually had a sideline warning because as he's taking it down the sideline, uh, I asked the official, well, who'd you run into? And the official looked at me and said, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I'm actually watching him. I'm like, well, who do you run into? So, uh, but he said everybody. So, but th th he, he, is a, he, is a, he is a fan favorite on our team. Everybody loves him. He works so hard. He's a 550-pound squatter. Wow. He's a walk-on. He's a guy that came and, and ran a sub-4-4 four, four for us. Uh, and he's from right across the border. Um, so, uh, you know, the in-state tuition's there, which is good for him. But he's a young man that, you know, we, we, we couldn't do much without because we want to really invest into our special teams this year, find a guy that was going to be a returner for us for many years to come. And he's a freshman. And, um, you know, he's, he's, you know, writing his name in, in that position. Yeah, we, we can talk about the, the slingshot later. I was like, I don't want to say how you can hit a guy into another guy, but I guess that's a legal tackle. Uh, did you notice that? Oh, to catch up to him? Yeah, he yeah. pushed his teammate. That's yeah. like what I would do trying to catch you. Just, yeah, just push out. Pierre into him and say, you go get him. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. But, Coach, when you look at John Michael Schmidt, everybody knows how good he is, but now he's great at actually is the number one center right now in college football. Uh, what is it about this kid that makes him so good? Well, he's tough. He's smart. 
Yeah, loves his teammates. He's a wonderful person. Again, another guy that's a better person than he is a player uh, and truly sacrifices himself for everybody else. And that's what you want in a center. He touches the football every single play besides the quarterback, gets us in the right uh, mic IDs, and uh, plays incredibly, incredibly tough. And he's from Chicago. That's good. Yeah, so that's you good. like that. Yeah, that yeah, works. So we talked earlier in the show about getting off the field defensively. So take us through what Penn State you know, is trying to do offensively and, and the things you need to do to make sure that you're getting the ball back to your offense well, this week. we got to get him on the ground. Um, you know, Sean Clifford is a quarterback that can spin it, throw it, but also when you watch a Michigan game, he can, he can pull that thing and go 60 yards in a heartbeat. He's a really athletic quarterback, really, really, really talented. And then everybody, they have four-star, five-star everything, right? So I don't have to describe all that. And then they got the number one quarterback in the country last year's class and the one running back last year's class. So they're loaded. They play more people than anybody we played this year. So, um, you know, they, they rotate on defense constantly. Same thing on offense, and uh, they're really talented. When you look at Penn State again, I mean, the environment, the atmosphere, I know you kind of touched on it a moment ago. Have you noticed how jazzed these guys are ready to go for this weekend's game? They're always ready to go. You know, that's the great thing about, you know, our team, our culture, our expectation, our standard, uh, the aspirations we have for this team. I mean, they, they want to play so bad. I'm really proud of them for how they've always had that one-game mentality. Whether we play well or don't, they, they still have that one-game mentality, and that's hard to do in our society right now, you know, with all the external noise. Sure, no doubt about it. Well, we appreciate you, everyone, joining us here on the P.J. Flex Show. Thank you so much for watching. Our thanks, as always, to the head coach of Gopher Football, P.J. Fleck. P.J., good luck this weekend at Penn State. We will see you back here later on this week, Saturday morning. Don't forget to tune in to the Gopher pregame show. Myself, Justin, Ron, getting you ready for the Gophers and the Nittany Lions.